What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Solro, and I'm back with another video. Um, today's video is about Lost Ark, um, which is a game I play religiously. Like, I might be obsessed with this game. I may play this game a little too much. Uh, I probably need to go and touch grass, but I won't. I will continue grinding on this game till my hair falls out, which I don't think it ever will because look at this. Look at this fluffiness. This is this is here, here, here to stay forever, baby. Anyways, getting back to the actual contents of the video, it's primarily about me completing uh, my first deathless run in a raid called K-Angle. Uh, now, for people who aren't m familiar with the game uh, or familiar with the raid, um, it is a four-man raid. And at the current recording of this video, it, it is kind of an end game raid, a uh, higher level raid, if you will. Uh, you can do the raid at 1540 item level, uh, 1580 if you want to do hard mode. And the character that I brought to this raid was my Aeromancer. So I figured, uh, along with the recording of my Deathless run, I would do maybe some side commentary, maybe some tips and uh, tricks, if you will, to uh, help you complete this raid. This is not going to be an in-depth guide because there's plenty of those out there. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, just some notes um, that I would, you know, that I would like to talk about as the video goes on. And uh, yeah, if you like this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel, please. And uh, follow me on Twitch. I'll post links below to all my socials but i stream pretty much every day now in the first gate of uh kangle you have to fight tienis um he's a pretty straightforward boss who only really has one major mechanic in the fight which happens around 55 lines um but uh you do have to watch out for a time mechanic where he spawns red uh red eye like a sauron's eye almost above a random person's head if you're not actively looking for this eye and the mixture of uh most of tianus's attack is red it's actually really hard to see so be extra vigilant in looking for this the whole purpose of the eye mechanic is if you have it above your head take it to the outer edges and wait for the pool of light or lightning or whatever you want to describe it as uh, to spawn beneath you and then you can go back and resume the fight. One thing to keep note of is that uh, before the 55 line mech you can actually stand in this pool and this pool will actually give you a buff. After the 55 line mechanic you want to avoid this shit like the plague. As far as battle items go, I typically bring my potions, that's a no-brainer. Uh, I also bring dark grenades, that will just help with your DPS uptime. Um, and then the last two items are kind of personal preference, but I typically bring sacred charms because there are some CCs in this map that you can um, un-CC your teammate out of in a pinch. The last fourth item, um, prior, it just kind of depends on you. Uh, you can use time stop if you're uncomfortable or unfamiliar with the raid or would like a oh shit button to press if you feel like you're about to die. Uh, you can also bring atropines if you're a DPS and you are familiar with the fight. That uh, atropines just help you do more damage. Uh, if you're a support you can bring stimulants that way you can have your identity gauge up faster. You notice that around this time he uh, spins his sword up in the air and he has this uh, blue dome surrounding him. Uh, that's a retaliation mech. What that means is uh, you don't want to attack him because if you do he will just retaliate. So at this point you want to stop DPSing him and wait until oh he's God. done spinning his sword around him. Uh, one of the challenges I faced when I was first progging this raid was uh, we would often trigger his berserk mode which would um, give him more HP and um, his attacks would pretty much one shot you. Um, that hitting a berserk mode in any rage just means that you aren't uh, DPSing the boss fast enough.
So this is when the mech at 55 lines starts. Uh, you notice that the outer edges are now uh, broken yeah. away. Um, as far as the actual mech itself, you want to avoid the bottom while dodging the lightning bolts as they come descending down the platform. Um, if you get hit by those lightning bolts, you will get stunned. And then when you get stunned, you get, put, get pushed down to the bottom. Tianus will choose a random person out of you four to throw a spear at. You can tell which one he's throwing a spear out by the target above your head, the red target above your head. The blue circle below below your character doesn't mean anything. It's, I think it's just there to make sure you know where you're at at all times during this mech. So the trick to the target is pretty simple. All you have to do is when you have the target above your head, you kind of just separate yourself away from the rest of the group. Typically people go top left or top right. And then when the target disappears, you space bar away. Now after the uh, 55 line mech, um, Tianus can knock you off the map. Um, so you want to be careful, but you still want to continue to DPS. Uh, you also want to uh, avoid the pools of light. Um, and you want to continue to take the, um, if you have the eye above your head, you want to continue to take the pulls to the outer edges. And you see here that I do get the Eye of Sauron above my head. And here. so I God. take it to the outer edges, preferably to a location that already has, or next to a location that has a pool already. Um, you just kind of want to wait until that eye disappears before you move back towards the fight. Obviously, Tianus has a crush on me because he gave me the eye again. So I uh, took it to the corner right over here. And you just want to make sure that you're looking for this and you continue to take it to the outside. Because these pulls um, after the 55 line mech uh, will fuck you up. Make sure you save your dark grenades for this point in the fight because you're going to need to DPS them fast during this stage. Because the pools don't go away, um, the longer the fight goes on, the more pools you will have on the field, which uh, limits the amount of space that you can uh, operate in. Personally, I found Gate 1 a little bit harder than Gate 2. Uh, when I was first progging, um, when I was first progging this rate, we wiped a bunch at gate uh, at this gate, and uh, I'm pretty sure we uh, one one shot at uh, gate two. Prunya is the um, next boss of gate 2 and um, she has three major mechs that you need to be aware of and the underlying theme of these mechs is knowing your elemental weaknesses. So this will definitely test your Pokemon battling knowledge. Um, so there's three elements in this fight, water, fire, and grass. Water is weak to grass, grass is weak to fire, fire is weak to water, and uh, just make sure you memorize that uh, because it will be a common theme throughout this fight. 
Uh, another mechanic that you need to be familiar with is that every minute and 30 seconds, she will freeze everybody and you essentially have to do a spacebar mechanic. But what makes this one unique is that you have to kind of edge the spacebar, as I like to call it, uh, until you see her pulsating a black color. So she'll send out multiple pulses. They'll all be green. And when you see the black pulse, that's when you want to complete the spacebar mech because uh, that's when you'll get the barrier. You can't obtain the barrier too early and that's why you wait until you see the black pulse. So as far as battle items go, you can obviously bring your potions and then you can choose to bring whirlwinds or darks. There is a stagger mech at 40 lines. So if you aren't comfortable with your stagger or you aren't comfortable with your team stagger, you can bring whirlwinds. But if you are comfortable with your stagger, bring darks so that way you can uh, DPS her down faster. Um, you can also bring uh, Atros if you're pretty comfortable with the fight, Stimulants um, if you're a support and you want to get your identity gauge, and then uh, you also want to bring Sacred Charms. So coming up you'll see the Edge or Spacebar mech, <laughs> name pending, to where um, you get we all get frozen in place. And you don't want to complete the spacebar mech until you see a black pulse. Uh, you want to keep the uh, gauge at about 90-95%. Uh, that way you're ready to uh, complete the mech when the black pulse comes out. As 60 lines is the first uh, major mechanic in the fight, you want to basically prevent orbs that she emits from touching the turrets uh the elemental turrets that are on the outer edges um how we do that is first we cleanse the three dps uh units stand in um three predetermined positions and rotate counterclockwise absorbing the orbs as we go so you notice here how she has a red glow beneath her so that means we need to destroy the blue orb which is the water orb Throughout the fight, Prunya will spawn clones and then disappear. She will leave behind like fields of lightning um, and one of the fields of lightning is a safe spot. How you determine which one is the safe spot is one will be more staticky, more electricity-y and it will make uh, electricity noises the closer you get to it. Um, and that's where you're going to have to stand to avoid the uh, map-wide AoE. Not the boom boom. The next major mechanic happens around 40 lines. Uh, she will spawn three soldiers. Uh, Typically, uh, you would stand in pretty. You would stand in the same positions that you would have done in the 60 line mech, because uh, the soldiers kind of spawn in that area. You want to counter the soldiers. Once all three soldiers are countered, then you go to the center and you you stagger Prunya. This is where whirlwind grenades come in handy. If you are comfortable with your team stagger or you're comfortable with your own stagger, uh, you don't have to bring whirlwinds and you can bring darks instead. The last major mechanic in this fight happens around 16 lines and she will spawn two elemental rings. Uh, in hard mode it is three elemental rings, uh, in normal it is only two. Basically you have to look at the color of the rings and destroy what would be the stronger element to that ring. In this example we have a green and blue ring. So on the green ring, we would destroy the red orb because fire beats grass. 
and on the blue ring we destroy the green orb because grass beats water one thing i would like to note here during this mech when you destroy these orbs make sure you're only using your auto attacks because if you use um, abilities or anything like that you run the risk of destroying other orbs that you're not meant to destroy if you fail this mech she will restore some of her hp and you would have to do this mech again and you have to keep doing this mech over and over until you get it right another side note as well is when you are done destroying the orbs make sure you stand either right next to her in the center or on the outer edges past the rings you do not want to stand right on the rings because they do explode and they do do a lot of damage when they explode after you complete the 16 line mech all you have to do is dps her down and uh you complete gate two <laughs> I leveled up. Hey, congrats. I somebody leveled up. Gate 3 you have to fight Lorio, who is the uh, the pretty boy angel of the group. He is pretty difficult. When I first started progging him, uh, we wiped a ton at this raid. Um, but now that I know the fight, uh, he is pretty fun, I would say. As far as what battle items to bring to Gate 3, you bring your potions again. You always bring your potions. Two people will bring dark grenades and two people will bring flame grenades and then you want to bring your time stops the reason why you bring your flame grenades is because there is a normal mechanic that happens um, and I'll try to point it out during this during the, the fight instead of doing the normal mechanic uh, you can cheese the mech by just greeting DPS and then using your flame grenades to get out of the CC that L'Oreal puts you in His first major mech happens at 180 lines. He does three slash explosions, and you have to dodge all three of them. Uh, your positions are your times three plus one position. Um, if you're not sure what that is, you take your party number. So for example, if you look at my party number here, it is party number uh, member three. So if you multiply that times three and you add the one, you get 10. So I am 10 o'clock I'm at the 10 o'clock position on this map, so that would be top left. After the three slash explosions, the three DPS units will typically gather on the top left of the map, while the support uh, unit will go to the center to pretty much aggro Lario. After you know you have Lario's aggro, after he kind of disappears off the map, you guide him towards a light crystal so he can activate it for you this will be a normal this will be kind of like an underlying mech throughout this whole fight uh every time he hits every time he hits the uh, light crystal with an attack it will shine and you need to destroy the light crystal to gain a buff if you don't have this buff if you don't have this buff while attacking l'oreal you'll do 
Very little damage. Oh, you're a bitch. You know that? Your mom never loved you as a child. That's why you turned out this way. Lario's next major mechanic happens at about 140 lines. Uh, it's called the Light Ray Mech. Basically, uh, in party order, so 1, 2, 3, and 4, you connect the Light Rays, and the fourth player has to connect the last ray towards Lario. A tip is you can use your auto attack to kind of aim the Light Ray at the next player. Um, all four players have to participate in this mech in order to complete it. Once the fourth ray hits Lariel, you'll stagger him successfully and uh, you will have completed the mech. His next major mech happens at about 100 lines. Uh, this mech is probably the most difficult one out of all of them. Uh, I know this uh, caused a lot of wipes uh, personally. Basically, everyone gathers at the center because he's going to do a map-wide AoE and you're only safe in the center. Otherwise, if you're not there, you will die. It's an instant one-shot. Um, you're going to look while you're in the center at your times three plus one position. So if you notice here, since I'm party member three, I am at the 10 o'clock position. I will be going to the top left after the initial uh, AoE this. here. You want to memorize where all the white orbs are in your times 3 plus 1 position. Um, if you forget, don't panic. If you, you can use an auto attack in the direction of an orb, which will send out a sonar ray, which will reveal the color of the orb. A black orb will stun you momentarily, uh, and you need 5 white orbs to be safe from the final attack L'Oreal does. While you are gathering your orbs, L'Oreal will channel uh, a solar beam type attack where you need to be in a shadow safe zone to avoid the attack. He will do two of these and if you do not have all five white orbs by the second attack, uh, then it will be an instantaneous death. Mom's a hoe. At some points in this fight, you'll notice that my DPS or my damage uh, isn't great. Or it's actually fucking terrible. And that is because uh, I do not have the light crystal buff. Um, you want to make sure that you are uh, breaking the light crystals whenever they're lit up on the minimap so you can get the buff. When you have the buff, you see a small circle below your feet. You can actually, that means you can actually bring the buff over to your teammates so they can get the buff as well. The last major mech happens at about 60 lines. Um, basically, here everyone gathers at the 12 o'clock position, which is north. And everyone gets uh, teleported to their own little dimension. 
the point of this mech here is to ping uh the red pillars that have these runic symbols and they look all glittery and shit um for your other party members if you notice a ping in front of a lario statue that is your statue in your dimension that you have to stagger make sure you wait and go around the whole map in a clockwise position uh to uh, for four pings before you start staggering your statue the moment you start staggering your statue starts the timer for the rest of your party members to stagger their statue so after you complete the 16 line mech there will be a cutscene um, you notice this pattern here. This is a normal attack pattern that you would normally try to dodge. You, if you have two party members that have brought flame grenades, you can actually just cheese this mech and just greed damage here. So we aren't doing any sort of dodging or anything like that because we know when this mech ends, we know that our two, mem two party members with the flame grenades will get us unstuck from this mech. A little fun tip too as well, because the Aeromancer has so much AoE, uh, specifically the Drizzle uh, build Aeromancer, she can actually act as her own flame grenade from just her abilities. After 60 lines, you'll start getting a non-cleansable debuff that increases your damage taken. Uh, this is when you want to start throwing your darks, and a shadow mechanic will periodically happen throughout this fight. Uh, you'll see a rune on the floor that will symbolize where the shadow safe spot is going to be from his solar beam attack. While this is happening, he's going to try to give you the good suck with his mirror. Now there is two ways to do this mech. Uh, one is to spacebar at the right time uh, while staying in the shadow. The other uh, way is to cheese it by using time stop. Now the timing of the time stop can be kind of uh, hard but the basic idea is you'll have a text a purple text above your head that says intense gaze and the moment that text disappears this slam that time stop button I know there's a lot in this fight that I didn't cover. Again, I didn't want to make this an in-depth guide because there's a lot of those out on YouTube right now. But if you do have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below or just come by my stream. Uh, I stream pretty much every day on Twitch. Uh, link will be in my bio, but it's twitch.tv uh, soul underscore real. Okay, guys. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.